Can we begin? In the name of God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so let us call to mind as we confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 124. Psalm 124, and it's found on page 770, on, in, on page 770 in the prayer book. If the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when men rose up against us, when they would have swallowed us alive, when their anger was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. The raging waters would have gone clean over us. But praise be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. 
we have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have gone free. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, and I read from the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It will be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender, and if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to this person, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. And so here ends the reading. And we hold it all together, I think, in that one essential verse about faith, where the disciple says, you know, the Lord is saying that you've got to you, you have to forgive, and sometimes you have to forgive seven times. If that person comes to you after having offended you seven times, then if that person comes again and says, no, I repent, please forgive me, we must. There is no option but to forgive. And then the, the disciples realizing the immensity of what they're feeling they have to do, they say, we can only do this with faith. Please, please increase our faith. And God says in Jesus that really, you know, it's not about how much faith you have in terms of quantity. It is the quality of your intent that is more essential. It's not about being in a competition with each other that who has more faith because this is ultimately the crux of the text. There's a competitive nature, the mimicking nature of human beings that we want to be better than the other instead of being just best at being human, best at being ordinary, but with a willingness to be available a willingness to care, a willingness not to bear grudges. And that's fairly simple. You don't need to be a theologian or a great uh, mystic. You just have to be somebody that recognizes your own limitations. And recognizing your own limitations, you also accept the limitations of somebody else. We say the song of Mary, and that's found on page 57. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abram and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of power, you are strong to save, and you never fail those who trust in you. Keep us under your protection and spread abroad your reign of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we pray for Walter Looning, for his beloved Hilary and for their family. We pray for the ongoing recovery to the improvement in the health of Peter Klatso. You also lift up before you Glenda Volskett. And we pray for Luke and all those who are near and dear to Glenda at this time. We pray for Auntie Maria Abrams. Sandra McGregor, for Auntie Connie, Sylvester, and for Auntie Sylvia Arnsa. You also pray for your continued hand and mercy on Inga Surti Duplessis and all those who are listening to this evening prayer tonight and you're invited to bring before God those who you care for, that you are concerned about. God of unchangeable power, you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keep us firm in this faith that we may praise and bless your holy name for you are one God, living and reigning in glory, now and forever. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, beloved, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. We give thanks uh, with those who have uh, successfully uh, received their jab and were vaccinated, some with a once-off vaccination and others their first one. Please uh, hold uh, the Vajra, Eddie, Esau and myself in prayer as we try our best 
to go around and try various options. Um, we are part of the group that uh, registered way back in the beginning in April. And um, I think we realize we just have to go. We have registered, but now we have to find a place. So um, I'm going to try here. Eddie has tried it in Hope Street. So let's see. Good night, everybody.